always look for musicians that like to play the kind of music that I see. Because there's a lot of great musicians around, but if they're not really into what I'm doing, then there's no point in them being on stage with me. They should be with somebody else. And I told that to musicians over the years, you know, I said, uh, you know, you play great, but you, you, you're you not really into what I'm doing, are you? You know, and they said, well, yeah, we are. We can play anything, yeah, but you've got to be able to, you know, you have to put as much into this as I do. You know, you've got to get the the mental thing that, you know, put out as much as I'm putting out and then, and, you know, get in tune with me. And, uh, and thank God this band that I have now does just that. They're all great musicians in their own right, but they can play soul music. I always go for strong players, you know, really gutsy strong players. Some musicians, they just want to read it and that's it. But these fellas, they want to live it. And that's what they do. Keith came out, you know, with a guitar with a dragon on it, because uh, he didn't show it to me before the show. So I turned around when he was doing his solo, and there was a dragon on it. So the first thing I said, well, where can I get one of those guitars? So I think they get me one. But uh, but he was thrilled that he could surprise me with something that he knew that I, I would like. Brian Monroney is, is, a, is a great guitarist, great musician, and he's told me that he's learned a lot since he's been with me, especially about, um, you know, rhythm and blues music. I think he was more like a sort of folky, maybe, before, but now he loves really good, you know, heavy rhythm. Some of the blues things that we do, like the Cap Mo thing, you know, with that steel, the slide, you know, he, he loves that. I mean, I don't know whether 10 years ago he would have wanted to play it, but uh, now he does, you know, he's, he's into it. Mr. Brian Monroe. He just gets in tune with what's going on, but he can play funky, you know, you, you know what I mean, if we're, when, when we're doing some of those soul things. You can play that. But then again, he's a great technical drummer as well, you know. Some rock drummers wouldn't be able to do that. He plays like a black drummer. You know, I've seen American black drummers have a style. They're heavy on the bass drum, you know what I mean? And, and then the fills, certain flair. And he plays like that. He can play it either. You can't do a show without a drummer. But that bass player is very important. Some get too busy. Some of them, they think they're bloody guitar players. You know, I mean, they're, and they, they, they're up and down a neck like a, you know. But they, I like bass players that get to the lowest note possible whenever possible. And he does it, because he, he plays some great stuff. But he knows he's playing a bass. He's a bass man. He's not a guitar player turned bass player. You know what I mean? His instrument is the bass. That's what he plays, and he plays it great. Well, Pete, Kevin, and Michael, you know, they're you know, the brass section. It's good to see them moving about a bit, especially when they're not naturally playing, you know, them with the instrument to the mouth. And that's great, so it gives people something to look at, and it looks like they're enjoying themselves, which they are. And I like that to come across. I like for people to know that all these musicians are really digging what they're doing. So, and if they're not blowing, they're dancing. You know, so, so that's the way it is. They're aggressive when need be, which is on stage. They blow hard, you know, and that's the way it is. But off stage, you know, they're gentlemen, they're very mild-mannered people, which is very unusual for brass players. Because, you know, most of them are uh, <laughs> hooligans, you know, and you've got to lock them up after they come off off the stage. But these fellas, no. 
the very very mild mannered people they put their aggression where it where it should be on stage <laughs> Delilah and uh, it's not unusual, you know, they, they, they brass heavy. So they've got to be able to play it and play it with conviction, not play it like a bloody brass band. Kenny Anderson is one of the best saxophone players that I've ever had with me. He's in tune with me. And he said, You want that like King Curtis type of thing? And I said, uh, That's it. A lot of brass players, they, they're jazzers, you know, they, they love jazz and, and great. But don't play it when you're on stage with me. You know, I want some rhythm and blues coming out. And some strong stuff, even when we do uh, Help Yourself, for instance. You know, that brass part in there, and the brass players have told me, that's not an easy thing to play. Jodie is, is a great percussionist. You know, she knows what she's doing. And she adds to the show because she's a great looking woman. And she's very flamboyant on stage. You know, she oozes with, uh, with sex appeal, if you like, you know, but she, she makes percussion sexy. Because the way she does it, there's an art form that she has created, you know, with these drums. She's a great show person, she can do it, she's, a, she's an entertainer as well. <laughs> 